All right, y'all, today is trying to test me in some sort of way, and I don't know what I thought, but today is a day at work, and it's not work that's testing me, it's just overwhelming myself. But long story short, you know what's happening on Saturday? So freaking excited and so nervous. Um, I think I went into yesterday about how the weekend went, and yeah, happy sad time. Happy about this and sad in the morning. Um, but with all that said, I thought I'd bring a clip from a few weeks ago where I talk with Ngazi and we talk about self-actualization, I think is a main gist of the conversation, whether it's the trans journey or the weight loss journey or whatever it is to being the best you. So yeah, without further ado, uh, yeah, don't forget, Saturday, September 19th, 7 p.m. Please tune in. You can go to thewaltzfilm.com or watch it on Facebook Live. All right? Love y'all. I didn't want to come off like I was separating trans people from the LGBT community. I should have like, no, like, everyone should be seen as an individual. There's so much more conversation about it now because there is a lot more visibility, and that's a good thing. And so, like, it's not just separating it out. It's, it's like saying... All lives do matter, but right now we're going to focus on black lives. Right, well, and also, too, for me, like, I feel like it's important to understand that the lesbian experience, the gay experience, the gender non-binary experience, the queer oh. experience are not the same. No, it's... And just because they are, they are all part of the letters doesn't mean they all experience their life the same way. So understanding that, like... Like, I mean, I can do that with my friend. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that the things she struggles with as a lesbian are not the same things that you would struggle with as a trans. Yeah. You know, and, th and making that okay. Yeah. And being like, okay, let me, well, let me understand your experience as who you are, and your ident and you know your identifiers. So I was hoping I was coming off that way. No, you were. You were. Oh, gosh. You were. Um, I always frame it in my head as like, there's actually seven billion plus experiences. So. So true. It's kind of like we're doing broad strokes here, but that's just so that our brain can work in. Yeah. Those Venn diagrams. Nobody's a monolith. No. But getting back to what you said about what did you just say? Um, under recognizing that meeting the person where they're at now versus trying to hold them to who they used to be. There we go. Okay. So one thing that I've talked about is the trans experience is an experience or a journey of self actualization that's very visible yes. and very like you can see it. But we're all actually going through yes. that, and as some, and you probably know this too from being from an immigrant culture, like, and I know this just from moving around as a child or whatever. It's like you go to different places, and all of a sudden you're a totally different person. Yeah. And you go back and you meet someone from the past, and they have an image of you that does not exist anymore. Yes. And so the same thing is happening to everyone. Yeah. And some people realize it when they go off to college and they come back and like. I don't connect with these people anymore yes. because I've a changed person. I've evolved, or that seems like it's judgy, but but it's true. You outgrow people all of the time, yeah. and it's possible to hold love for people in their different stages. Yeah, but it's also possible to realize that the stage they're going to, you can't go with them. Yeah, and that's fine. It's okay to outgrow people. And I, yeah, right. It always sounds off like you're judging them. Like, oh, so you, they didn't grow? No, you just cause grew separately. Grew separately, like evolved. Y'all are both growing. Yeah. That's evolving. Just not together. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I can't grow my pepper plant and my tomato plant with the same roots. No. Oh. So it's okay that they we separate. Them. Yeah. So um, I think it's just, and it's something that for me, just as a therapist, I have to recognize, right? So, the, and I'm working with you on mm -hmm. is the person you come into therapy as, I hope, <laughs> when you leave is not the same. Right. And to keep you where you were when you started doesn't make any sense. All right. I have no idea where we left off at. Well, we were just mainly talking about, you know, meeting people. Where they are. And then, right. And the, and the person that they are now. But something that you mentioned, I totally agree with that, right? So the trans experience is one where we're watching people's growth, like, in real time. Mm -hmm. And we're not used to that. Yeah. So it, it's hard to experience that because it's like, wait, you're real, you're wait, what? not the same person you used to be. But I think not only trans people experience that, but also people who lose a lot of weight. Yes. Experience the exact same thing. It's physical changes in your body and people 
doing their best or worst to adjust to that. Right, because we see this with something that I've noticed too is when people start to lose weight and in my, my Facebook groups online, people talk about it all the time, is the comments you get. Yeah. And typically we say that those comments are rooted in people's own insecurities. And I think it's kind of the same thing of, right, you're watching somebody change and it's a choice they're making like they're actively making steps to change as you're watching them do it you're watching them daily take that brave step yeah and i mean Brene brown talks about this right like we want to see vulnerability in others but it triggers insecurity in us right and it's like why that person being so vulnerable because that means i have to be vulnerable exactly i don't want to do that so i'm not gonna do that so then we try to knock it down Mm -hmm. so then we have to figure out something to say it's wrong so that we can justify in our mind that this shouldn't be happening. Right. But no, this is what it means to be human, is ever, hopefully you're working towards becoming like a better version of yourself each time. And it does require a level of vulnerability. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm never going to knock anybody who chooses how to express their, their um, identity, but I, the bravery it takes to like do the full transition is like, wow. You know, and it's like, okay. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I wish I could be that vulnerable and open, even just like having to acknowledge everything yourself, you know? Yeah, that was a big step in therapy of a lot of tears. And even along the process, like, I remember last summer, I was so moody or from something. I can't remember what it was, but it was a prolonged period. And I was like, what is going on with you? And I just broke down crying. I was like, whoa, what's going <laughs> on? And like... I just wanted to know why you're so moody and right. like having a full on breakdown, like I can't control my crying and breathing yeah. sort of crying. So yeah. But it's it's tough. I mean, like I said before in talking about, you know, on my weight loss journey, it took me six months before I could see myself the way, you know, everybody else was seeing. Yeah. And even now I still have to remind myself that I'm not that two hundred and twenty two pound person anymore. And that's a challenge. Like, I mean, but I, I've been in this body. Like, I've had this size for about a year now. Yeah. And it's still new to me. <laughs> just a whole new experience of, like, what is this body doing? Yeah, it's like, oh, we do this now. <laughs> okay. Um, and But not only moving differently in yourself, but also in how the world interacts with you differently. Yes. And that's a big adjustment, too, I think. I agree. And, right, so kind of... Before I did all of this, like I was so used to being in the background, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of it too was just I wasn't living my best life. Yeah. So when you're not doing that, like you behave a certain kind of way. Right. Like you, when you're not living your best life, you want to shrink into the shadows exactly. and not be noticed or whatever. But as you start living your best life, you're like, yeah, you are more confident, and people this is respond me. to that. Yes. This is me. And then getting all this attention, I was like, oh wait a minute. Oh, you saw me? I love it. Because I'm not used to, I mean, I've never been a center of retention. Per, I've always been a wallflower mm-hmm. as a child. Like, my parents would sometimes wonder, like, is she still in the crib? Because, yeah. <laughs> like, I've never been loud. But the more, and then, but then <laughs> I got on the stage in the world's smallest bikini for people to judge me, you know? Right. And it's like that evolution. I'm like, who are you? And then even asking myself, who do you think you are getting up on the stage, child? Hunty. But then you're like, I deserve to be on this stage. Exactly. And it's like, I I say this a lot, like I posted it on social, and then I say it to my, a lot of times little inspirational things I post on social, it's just stuff I'm telling myself. Y'all are just privy to it. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, That's 100% of my show. (laughs) <laughs> it's just me talking to me. I was having this conversation with myself, decided to share. Um, but, you know, you have to believe that you are worth the things that you deserve. Yeah. And that is, I think, the hardest part. And that's also, I think, hard because pe- most people don't think that they deserve good things. Yeah. And for whatever reason, something happened in your life that made you feel like good things are only for certain people. Um, no, like you... For the fact that you exist as a human being, you deserve good things. <laughs>